Well, hey there, Swords fans. So, you know, this is the all-promised uh, second video with uh, myself and Boomer. Hey, guys. We've been um, trying to drag you into playing... You know, like, when the Steam sales hits, like last year, we're all going, oh, look at all these new games to play, and you're going, I want to play Saints Row 2. <laughs> yeah, but Saints Row 2 is yeah. really good. And... Like, we've tried on multiple occasions to get you into, like, Warcraft, and Lee obviously wants to get gets you into Diablo, and you've been playing that for a bit. Mm. Um, and I've obviously lost, like, several thousand hours to games like Team Fortress and Civ Five and Civ stuff 5 like that. Was the one I was but of, yeah. we thought it'd be really interesting to actually give the next World of Warcraft expansion a go, which is in six weeks from this video. So it's like 11th of November, something around that date. Yep. It... But we know Lee's going to play it, because me and Lee are on the same server. Yeah. Lee's, Lee's raiding. Lee's like, raiding right, right as, as we we're speak. Making yeah. this video, you know, even though he's got like nothing left to do pretty much in the game. Um, you could never get into the game because you insisted on playing Mage, which, which at the time was like the hardest class to play. Yeah, I mean... Freeze I, Mage was ridiculously um, complicated compared to a lot of other classes. I mean, I got yeah. a lot of the farming techniques down that were used, but it just got to the... It got to the point where no, I you, wasn't No, 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 you to, had a job. Yeah. Which that. is why it wasn't possible for you to play World of Warcraft. Because <laughs> only people without jobs could invest enough hours to actually be able to do stuff. Yeah, That's true. just... Because it used to be all about rounding. Yeah, and you had to do a lot of it. Yeah, I mean, I and, still have. And you one, never which did. Is the downside. But, you know. I mean, you barely got past level thirty with your character, and that took you a month and a half. <laughs> <laughs> you were just like, I played it for ten minutes. That's all I've got free for today. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, things aren't going to work well for you playing Warcraft with ten minutes a day. Yeah. But then you did take three hours a day to eat because you were the slowest eater in the world. That's true. I mean, I'm doing less of that now. Like, so Lee was a, a medium-paced eater, and I was an extremely fast eater. Yeah, there's no standing on ceremony with you round, is there? It's just like, fruit, if there is food there, it is devoured, and then there's stuff to do. Well, you especially have to eat fast around other fat people, or else <laughs> they just go, you're not eating that, and then they eat it. But, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just like there's no stand. It's mainly because my my dad was a fast eater because he he used to be a marine engineer. Oh yeah, the merchant navy, and you know they'd always be like, "Oh look at that," and they'd pinch your food. <laughs> you know, everyone would constantly try and distract each other. All 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 the seamen were trying to steal each other's foods like pretty much all the time. Yeah, because it it was like strategy to leave everyone ever so slightly underfed. To make them more productive, you know, and is so. Yeah. <laughs> so they're more, they're know, more everyone, ravenous when they face would the enemy. Compensate for the smaller portions by eating other people's portions. <laughs> but you know, if you were like um, on a boat going from like India uh, to, to Taiwan or something, and like that, that would be rice every day. So any time it yeah. wasn't rice you stole as much of it off everyone else as possible. Cause it's one of the things I can't eat now, right? Mm, yeah. Uh, so we thought we'd, we'd get you involved um, in, in World of Warcraft, but there's no reason why, you know, other people... Because uh, they've got enough warning. They've got like six, seven weeks if they want to make a character on the European um, servers. So I'm just going to load up... Here, I'm just trying to remember uh, the server myself and, and Lee were on. Uh, we'll put the, the details uh, like in the chat below. Yeah. Here we go. So, the server I was on probably doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> well, they did merge a bunch of servers, so they all still exist. But yeah. uh, Right, okay, so we are... I'll have to in, take this down. On the, yeah, we're, uh, indeed, this is for you as well. Yeah. Um, we're on the EU servers, we're on the Horde side, and the uh, server is called Killrog, K-I-L-R-O-G-G, and obviously uh, my character is called Ribbo, uh, and do, do you want to have a, a guess at um, what class I play? Paladins. For yeah, you know, <laughs> I play Paladin. 
Like, I've always played Paladin when I play Like, even in the original sort of vanilla World of Warcraft, I played Paladin. Weren't, I was Paladins, utterly, weren't Paladins utterly crap back then? They basically... They, 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 would, they actually they couldn't even really heal either, like yeah, because all like... the other classes were better at healing. But they were very good at cleansing. Yeah. So they could remove, like, you know all the poisons and disease and that was your job you, you in the 40 man rage you were just like i will remove everyone's diseases yeah it's like they couldn't you know they couldn't dps and they couldn't heal the only the only thing they were really good at was they just couldn't die that well no, nobody that. could dps apart from warriors mm. like like the original warrior in in vanilla wow was ridiculous and like any time you, you looked at the PvP rankings, the guy who was rank one was always a warrior. Yeah. Because he could just one, he could just one shot people um, with a, a, a big enough crit. Uh, it was quite ridiculous. Anyway, so, you know, we thought it'd be fun to maybe have uh, a little sort of caramel gaming guild if there's e- enough demand for it. Because, um, like I said, you know, me and Lee are already on the server. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously Boomer's gonna hope that no one's took the name Boomer. I mean, we'll have to, we'll have to wait and see how. Well, how my that... uh, no, my gamer tag on Blizzard is Boomer. Uh, so... It'll have to be Slim Boomer if Boomer's <laughs> taken. Yeah. Uh, or have to e- play Evil depth. Boomer, considering I'm growing a goatee. It'll have to be the evil version of me. Um. I was actually uh, thinking so, I've got yeah, a, uh, I've got my piece of paper here that I wrote it all down on. I, I've got I know you want to just make a few um, Diablo videos as well with uh, Lee because you you think the game's pretty interesting. Because I mean Diablo was crap when it came out. Oh, it was horrible honest. when it first came out. It just and they no... brought this expansion out that fixed a lot of the issues. A lot of the stuff has been fixed in Reaper of Souls, and the latest patch has fixed it even more. Um, and it's a pretty interesting game. I mean, mm. I think a lot of people are just suckers in general for Blizzard games, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I am. I've you know, I've reinstalled. Now that I've got like the huge hard drive on this new PC, it's like the uh, you know, StarCraft Two, War- World of Warcraft, Diablo Three. They're all in- reinstalled. I mean, yeah, and it feels like Heroes of Storm will be another one of those that, Probably, like, when yeah. it eventually comes out, will be really good. Not that I will play it because. I'm terrible at those kind of like League yeah. of Legends. Just uh, wouldn't know where to start. Yeah, I was god awful at that as well. So <laughs> like, never even never. I tried it. A, I tried it a couple of times. Um, yeah. It was fascinating listen, listening to Lee. Yeah, because he 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 watched all the streams, you know, of like the major championship. Remember when he used to try and rope us into watching them as well with him? Yeah, and he tried to explain what's going on, and like. Um, you lost me about ten minutes ago. Yeah, it's like it, the it, problem is you have to. Board. Yeah, it's like you have to know what every single character does, and I and, and even though there's only do. four buttons for each character, that's I mean that's the, the great thing about the game is like yeah. each character has four attacks. Yeah, I mean to be honest, <laughs> Diablo is like three too many. Diablo three is configured that way now. It's like you have six abilities: left but left mouse button, right mouse button, and four keys. You know, they're they're the abilities you have, you know, and deal with it. You can swap them all out and round and things like that, but deal with it. But what happened was the I mean, Lee puts it down to they got rid of the auction house. That's what made Diablo three good now. Um and they introduced they they got rid of the auction house and they introduced smart loot, which means you pick up stuff which is useful for your character. And they buffed up the legendary drop rate. They basically did it. I think they did it as like a weekend or a week long thing, and then they just went, "You know what? We'll keep it." <laughs> That's basically, they did it for an event and just went, "Yeah, we'll keep it because everyone really liked it." And they've also introduced randomized dungeons, which is something that I think a lot of people were clamoring for. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's basically we want an end game that doesn't involve grinding the bosses. Um, we also want an end game which doesn't involve a single cow level, which is obviously what happened in Diablo Two. You beat all the, you beat the bosses on hell, and then you just farm the cow level. And when they introduce the ubers, you just farm the ubers. Uh, so 
in Diablo 3, what they've done is they've introduced Nephilim Rifts and Greater Nephilim Rifts, where it's a randomized dungeon, you get a big-ass boss at the end, and they have massive... Um, it's like the legendary drop rate is increased in them uh, as well. So it's like, if you want to farm for legendary items, you just do Nephilim Rifts. Uh, if you want to do other endgame content, like grind for gold and re-roll your gear, you can do bounties. You know, So there's a lot of different stuff, that you can, which are all different, depending on how you reset them. So there's a lot more for me to do. I mean, I... To be honest, I never really got into MMOs or, like, game... You know, a lot of mass multiplayer online games. Recently. The first one I sort of dipped my toe in was Star Trek Online, but that really wasn't... Uh, you know, that wasn't... A uh, good and that was funny, because... Every other single person... Hated that game. Mm. And you loved it, but that's because you love Star Trek. Well, that's because you like the in game universe. You know, you only have to look at the fact yeah, that I've like, done LPs on it. All know? of us who have ever played any MMO in my life no, it's will terrible, tell yeah. you like how clunky everything is and how badly managed it all was. Mm. I mean, it got better. And maybe when you'll really appreciate playing World of Warcraft now because of that, because you'd be like, <gasps> MMOs are really this good? And you'd be like, yes. Yeah, I mean... This is standard. The thing is, I now have, like, a macro keyboard and everything to use this stuff. But, you know, it's like, um, when I was... But I stopped playing STO. I mean, I liked it for ages, but I stopped playing STO at the point where I went, I've you got a max level point. ship. Yeah, I basically went, <laughs> I've got a max level ship now. I'm doing, you know, I was doing for what my class is. I was doing as much damage as you can do with as much survivability. And I was like, well, what do I do now? That's it's it. Like, I've I won can't... the game. We're done. Yeah, I've won the game. We're done. There's no such <laughs> thing as legendaries in this game. You know, it's like there's no gear, there's no gear to grind. It's like you grind the reputation we system. We just pissed off with and... being able to beat up board cubes as well. When you were like, yeah, it's like I'm ru- I'm I'm a I'm, yeah. I'm a what do you call it? I'm a you know, I'm playing the equivalent of a sovereign class starship, and I can like kill a board cube in five seconds. What the? F- you know, I'm like taking on three board cubes at once and winning. It's like, yeah, the, you know. So they ended up screwing up that, the. Image. That was when your, um, you, you you know, in wrestling, you have the the sense of disbelief, don't you? Yeah, you have you to. Know it's win. not real, but you have to you present the illusion that. that it's real. Yeah, and that's when it was shattered. <laughs> For you in Star Trek, that was the moment when you went. This isn't real anymore. Right, it's like it isn't. You know, it basically is <laughs> fucked over the cannon. You know, that's basically the way you want to put it that way. But you know, it's like, you know, whenever you try. I mean, I had this when I did when I've done Star Trek LPs. You know, it, the one thing that the one thing I called them all out on, and this was even the good games. The one I called them all out on is. The Borg are not meant to be a normal enemy race. They were never designed that way. You know, they're a force of nature. You can't stop them. Why am I in a Why am I in a game where uh, I am killing Borg cubes willy nilly? You know, if you want if you want it to be a Star Trek game, it should be. If the Borg come, that's it. Galaxy's screwed. You know, not the Borg invade. We fight off like five hundred cubes. <laughs> So it it is like suspension. It is suspension of uh, you know you want to get if you're playing a Star Trek game. Let's face it, you're not playing it because you want to play a good game. Because there've been very very few good Star Trek games. You're doing it because you enjoy the universe. Yeah, in other words, you're a nerd. Exactly. You you're a proper Star Trek nerd, and to you, the storyline is the most. The, the most important thing there is. In fact, like some of the biggest heated arguments you ever get into are which universe is considered canon. Oh yeah, the JJ Abrahams <laughs> universe or the To be fair, I've not I haven't actually seen the JJ I have to confess I haven't seen the JJ Abrahams films, which is really bad because I'm a complete mark yeah. for Benedict Cumberbatch. Or like if you watch so. Voyager, it's like and which characters made it through to the end? And you go, no, he's from this alternative reality. Yeah. And and, and so's he. And, and he died and was replaced by someone else. So you think it's all the original characters. You're like, nope. And then so, you just don't mention Enterprise because it's possible it never happened. So 
you know, like story is very important to Star Trek nerds, and uh, they screwed that one up. So that was that done as a game. It was similar. Uh, funnily enough, it was the exact opposite for the Star Wars MMO, which was just didn't have enough content in it. Like yeah. everything was very clean and crisp. And when they were designing the games, they had to absolutely damn make sure uh, they stuck close to like canon. Yeah, I mean, which is weird because for an age. It's like if you actually look at canon, Star Trek and Star Wars canon are handled completely differently. Mm -hmm. uh, for Star Wars, it's basically anything that's written down is canon. So, like, all they, the books. They actually are... changed that. Uh, yeah. I was like, oh, come on to that. They actually changed that six months ago. They actually came out and said that the video games are no longer considered canon. Yeah, because basically the Star Trek idea was that if it hasn't been on screen, it's not canon. Yeah. So but the reason was... behind the Star Wars change was because of the new films that are being currently shot. Yeah, exactly. In England, uh, the they they didn't want to have to follow the rules of like the the cartoons and the computer games stuff like that. So they just said, you know what? Didn't want Haldo just... Peacekeeper. But again, up. that 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 happened at all the same time as as um, Star Wars being sold to Disney. Yeah. I mean, the other side of that because is... Disney, that was, like, absolute control over everything. They're a lot like Blizzard in that respect. Yeah. I mean, that was the other thing to do with um, Star... Uh, that was the other thing to do with Star Trek Online. Same thing as Star Wars. There was no endgame. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, it's the same mission. And it's a killer. And, you know, Blizzard had been... Blizzard screwed that one up with Diablo 3 as well. No endgame, so terrible game until they fixed it recently. But it's something they've... On the most part, always got right with World of Warcraft. I mean, they've yeah. certainly learned over the last ten years how to do it properly, but you know, they've they, they've got there like a lot sooner. Uh, but they have also screwed that up with Hearthstone. You know, just with having like one expansion for the first twelve, thirteen months the game's been out, it's like yeah. ridiculously slow. And you know, small team, but given they're just announcing they've got twenty minute twenty million players, uh, why haven't they got a bigger dev team then? Yeah, it's. I mean, I remember. I remember them. You know. People from Hasbro saying, you know, we don't consider Hearthstone a rival for Magic the Gathering. No, you are correct. Players? Hearthstone, uh, is Hearthstone, that, is that has now? Hearthstone has kicked how your many ass. Players you need? How many players do you need? But the thing is, right, okay, they've got 20 million players. 8 million of those players only installed the game to go get the mount in World of Warcraft. <laughs> <laughs> if you think about it, because you had to win, like, five games, and then yeah, you got a ward. Mount. Wasn't there a man? I, I guarantee there's a well. ton of people who who play, won those five games and then went right back to what back to WoW. Wasn't there a mount to do with Nax as well? No, well, no. There's only been the one mount in World of Warcraft that you got from playing Hearthstone. There was the reverse. If you buy the digital deluxe edition of the next expansion. Which yeah. is like fifteen pounds more uh, for Warlords of Draenor. If you get the digital deluxe issue, you get like a pet and things. One of the other things you do is you get a, an exclusive card back in Hearthstone. So everyone you know, the, loves their card backs. Yeah, I don't love it enough to pay an extra fifteen pounds, but <laughs> some people will. Well, you've got yeah. your Legend card back, so you're not even. So you know you're not even uh, worried about that because once people get to Legend, you just see them using the Legend card back all the time. Yeah, there'll be a bunch of people who deliberately don't use that card back because they don't want to know their opponent that they're legend. Yeah, you know that makes the most sense. It's like like you used to turn up to magic tournaments, and like this, the the, the color wheel has got the five colors of magic, yeah. and the, the the red decks were very sort of fast and aggressive. Put it in blue people, sleeves. The people who always played the red decks always had red sleeves and a red deck box. Yeah. And if they had any little tokens, they had a little red token guy. So, yeah. you know, so you'd, you'd turn up with your red deck and you'd be like, yeah, blue sleeves, blue deck box, blue play mat, <laughs> like a play mat of a picture of an island. Yeah. And then your opponent and mulligan wrong against you. you start the game. <laughs> But like uh, I'm playing against control here, and then you'd be like, "Red guys," and they'd yeah. be like, oh, oh, "Oh, you got me there with your blue deck box." <laughs> <laughs> small edges, man. The games are small edges. Yeah, yeah. Bizarrely, it could work occasionally. You, know? yeah. you put one one island into your into your um, into your red deck, you know, and and you'd be shuffling before the match starts, and just accidentally be able to drop that island. Onto the floor, face yeah. 
down, oh, there goes my island, now you know what I'm playing, and then you'd be like, haha, red cards afterwards. <laughs> I mean, one of the things that you will see, I mean, as I said, when we were, I think I mentioned it towards the end of the last video, uh, certainly when we're playing Diablo 3 and probably wound uh, that, the one thing I will want to discuss is RNG, because uh, one of the things that's actually happened recently um there's a reason that my nickname is sometimes bad luck boomer is that uh, basically lee and i started off at exactly the same level on our characters like paragon level this is in diablo like. yeah in diablo way. we started off at the same paragon level we're basically about 40 levels further than where we are now i'm still pretty much in the same gear farming the same stuff lee's doing like the maximum end game because he picked up everything he needs for his character <laughs> and it does happen okay that i imagine that can happen in sort of diablo it can happen in wow as well because of drop rates etc is that once someone gets the items they need before someone else they just shoot off into the distance and you know, it's one of those. It's one of those things. Obviously, card games have their own randomness, but that's built in. Um, there have been some. You you always love the tinfoil hat brigade on Reddit when they come out, like try to say, you know, Blizzard rigs the uh, drop rate. Like, they don't rig the drop rate. Well, at there's all. been some fascinating conversations that you get on the forums, like the not just Reddit, but like the official forums are pretty much the worst to this. Um. Where people go, you know, that the game's rigged against them. Yeah. And you're there thinking, well, who's it rigged for? Yeah, exactly. Like, if Blizzard decides that you want to lose, why have they decided that anyone else should win? Yeah. Exactly. It's like, who gains from you not getting dropped? <laughs> you know, um, so people have a hard time understanding... Yeah. As the phrase goes, I mean, and as we both know from having played so much poker, you know, random is random. Yeah, exactly. Random does not mean you get the same stuff as everyone else. That's not what random means. Yeah, I mean, it means that's you could. The, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. I don't think anyone can see the scratch marks on this, but I've basically been doing that for uh, Treasure Goblins on Diablo 3. Uh, because on Diablo 3, they have a 2% drop of... 2% uh, chance of opening a portal to what's called Greed's Realm, which is a shed load of gold and cool stuff. Um, now, that 2% chance does not mean if you kill 50 treasure goblins, you will get a portal. That is not what 2% chance means. Yeah, it actually works out about after 50 um portals you got something like a 33 percent chance of having had one drop yeah i mean it's also got like a, a like a five percent chance of having three drop yeah i mean being That's the 50. being the maths nerd i am being a like uh, being a former poker player on that i actually worked it out and you are not actually you know i consider unlucky to be two standard deviations you know, if you're over mm -hmm. two standard deviations, that's when it becomes so, so an aberration. You, you're looking at having killed some like 125 treasure goblins. 100, 100, I think it comes out to about 148. That's 148 that's... treasure goblins before you can officially say I am in fact unlucky at this game. Yeah. So within like a five percent margin it's of error, five, it's five percent. Yeah. That two standard deviations it's sometimes is ninety-five percent. Like two and a half percent people use. Yeah. That's yeah. It goes. It's like one standard deviation is sixty-seven percent. Two is ninety-five, and three is like ninety-nine point seven. So generally, ninety-five is used as ninety-five is when it becomes significant. It's like yeah, anything it, below. It's a margin of error of less than like one or two percent from what can possibly happen. So yeah. usually that's like enough. Yeah. So generally, that so yeah, as I said, it's like it's something like if you kill a hundred and forty treasure goblins and don't get a portal, that is within completely standard variance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you you would be like. There will be seven percent of the other players will also be in the same position as you. Yeah. At that point. Exactly. Yeah. 
So, so and, you have to get down to like two percent of players before you can sort of consider and, yourself unlucky. I mean, one of the one of the items that I want to drop, for example, is a witch doctor. Is anything? Is in anything? Fact, in fact, anything in the moment. In the game, just one to drop. <laughs> yeah, just something, um, please. But it's called Star Metal Curie. Is one of the things that I want to drop. And I looked it up. I think it has a two percent drop rate, assuming you hit a legendary ceremonial knife. So it's like you've got to roll whatever the percentage is to get a legendary anyway which is like one mm-hmm. percent or something yeah. then you've got to roll a ceremonial knife and then you've got to roll this one percent of getting a star metal <laughs> you know so it is ridiculously unlikely you're gonna get a star metal drop in this game um and there are people that can be like i've got a hundred or like 300 paragon levels it's like 300 paragon levels is like it's not even i mean i'm like paragon level 140 and i don't think i've done that much you know i haven't played i haven't like dedicated days to this game you know it's like i play it for like two or three hours a night sometimes and that's only been for the last week so Mm -hmm. you know and i'm at paragon level 140 and i definitely haven't seen a star metal curie although the funny thing being that what i have done the mask i really want is a mask of jerem which has a 17 i think it's 17 percent drop rate on voodoo masks I have every other mask apart from apart from a mask of Jerem, including the masks which have like a five percent drop rate. It's just like the game just went, nope, you are not having this best in slot mask. You can have every other mask, including this super rare one, <laughs> which you'll get shit rolls on because it's you. You know that's just basically how's the game been. But, you know, that's what keeps bringing people back. It's like, I, th- I actually think that RNG serves to, you know, people complain about it, but in the end it's what brings a lot of them back because well, you've always R- got RNG that Well, RNG is, in fact, the whole reason behind all the free-to-play games. Yeah. Like, um, because ultimately it's gambling. Mm. You know, like, when, anytime you play one of these free-to-play games where, you, you know, you, you buy energy or something like that, or um, you buy, like, the currency that allows you to sort of have chances at doing stuff, um, it's when you're successful and you get what you want, that's that's what keeps you playing in the game. Yeah. Um, and it, 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 it it's, it's also... It, it's also what makes you realize you're not playing a game anymore <laughs> yeah you know um like the moment you you start to realize you're paying to just give yourself a chance at doing something that's what that's when you stop playing that game completely so yeah. it's very important that if you have rng it doesn't use the free to play model you know, it has to be, like I said, as part of Diablo, it, like where you're just investing time. Yeah, I mean, Diablo... Opposed to money. I mean, it's fairly interesting the way that Blizzard have set all their games up because it's like Diablo, for me now, Diablo 3 is very casual friendly. Uh, you know, you can play it 10 hours a week or whatever. You can play it 5 hours a week and you'll get to level 70 and you'll get some decent drops out of it. But it's fascinating because, right, you're so you've got all these different levels, right? Yeah. So, uh, you, like one through six or whatever. So, the various difficulties, the sorry. Torment, the torment levels, and, yeah. Um, so, basically, we're, I'm going to make some stats up. It doesn't matter what the actual stats are. So, let's say the chance of a legendary dropping is 1%. Yeah. Uh, so, as you go up a torment level, in other words, as you improve your gear, you know, that'll become, say, 2%. And then you go up a torment level and it'll become 3%. Now, so you get you get to do the same amount of gr- so basically you're grinding s- so that you can grind easier <laughs> yeah, in the future exactly or you can grind quicker but you're still grinding so you're grinding for the sake of grinding I, I'm going to do some grinding here so that I can do more grinding in a bit yeah and it's uh, the same it's sort of an argument that often gets used in world of warcraft it's like why do you want the why are you going on raids to get the best gear why do you want the best gear so i can raid <laughs> it's like it just keeps going on and on and on yeah. it was one of the problems of course with raiding was that when people got the best gear they stopped playing yeah it's like what's the point and anymore? so whoever you used to gear up would quit. Yeah. Like, why are we gearing? Whoever we chose to gear up, like especially the main tank, 
He went, I've got all the gear. Uh, see you in the next expansion in nine months. Yeah. When all my gear is like, now what about, useless. What about the rest of us? <laughs> it's like, now all the gear is useless. I've got to go and get the other gear now. So, you know, I mean, that's why they had to fix a lot in World of Warcraft and give everyone their own personal loot table because... It was disgraceful having people quit after having just been given a ton of gear. How does... I mean, I know that Diab in Diablo 3 you have individual loot. Uh, basically, mm -hmm. if you're... You know, if you're... It used to be in previous Diablo games, it was whoever could click the fastest when the stuff fell on the floor. Yeah, whoever had the, le whoever had the least <laughs> ping, basically. Which would be me screwed. <laughs> you know, my internet's a rock. Um, but... But you get a big warning symbol now when a legend drops. Uh, well, you do, but the other thing that you get is... Um, yeah, a big whoop on yeah, the minimap. It's like, a, yeah, the minimap has... You like missed a, something, bro! Yeah, it has like a big green, big, or, ass. big green or orange star and like a halo going up to light, you know, a beam of light shining up to the heavens to show this is a set item or this is a legendary item. But each person gets their own loot in the party and it doesn't interfere with anyone else. Uh, so that makes it worthwhile, obviously, to join a party because the more people in the party, you get better drop rates, but everyone gets their own loot, so... Everyone gets better drop rates? Yeah, uh, the, the more, more people... Yeah. yeah, the more people who are in, the monsters get tougher and the drop rates get better. Uh, okay. So, you know, it's a really... It's really worth, like, partying up. Whereas before, it might not have been worth partying up if you just had a shit ping, because everyone would just hoover stuff up while you were mm -hmm. yeah. there. So, you know, they, they have fixed various things where it makes it worthwhile to party with people. It makes it really worthwhile. You know, the end game is varied enough to keep it interesting. And, you know, you can... Because they're doing it in seasons now... Um, or you can create seasonal characters now. I think they have a season that lasts like three months or something like that. Um, you can just go back and level up, or you're like, I'll try a different character this season or something like that. Rather than what you used to do, it's like, well, I've got, I've played all six characters. They're all at level seventy. They've all got the best gear. What do I do now? And so they're like, they're extending the end game basically. Or you know, you had the people who just went. I spent fifteen hundred dollars buying all the best gear on the game. Like you chump. <laughs> but it's, like, it's like why? Why would you do that? It's like there's no world championships or anything where you can earn money playing Diablo. It's like you've just spent thousands of dollars on something that is literally worthless. You know, it's like that. It, if someone spends thousands of dollars on magic cards, at least there is some form of investment. You might be able to get some of it back. Yeah, you know, it's one of the arguments that like standard cards will retain like eighty percent of their value as long as you trade buy and trade them smartly. So you don't actually lose all that money. But it's like if you're doing that on Diablo 3, that is literally worthless. It is pixels on a screen. It's ones and zeros on a server, which you can never move on again. You know, it's like why would you do this? And then Blizzard just went auction house gone. <laughs> it's like no money being made at all now because I mean the cap on the auction house was $250 but obviously like third party sites happen mm -hmm. you know, it's like, and for stuff that was like max roll end game content there was some serious money being thrown around you know like for, for GG items basically you know it was like thousands of dollars got exchanged for those anyway um so that's basically uh, Diablo in a nutshell and the RNG and stuff like that. But, you know, these are all games that um, I think between the three of us, we've all enjoyed playing at some point yeah, for yeah, our own absolutely. different reasons. Absolutely. Um, Lee always likes playing um, Warrior or Rogue. He likes getting up close and, and hitting things. Yeah, he, he's, a, um, he's the hit man, basically. <laughs> I've always, um, I'm, I've always enjoyed playing Pally, but I do like, I do like my healing. Yeah, like that, that's my thing. Like if I'm raiding, I'm always healing. And uh, did you ever play priest or? Yeah, I've got like priest and a druid healer and stuff like that. You know, but you know, if I'm doing DPS, I'm ranged as well. And I know that was all you could handle as well. You didn't like moving much. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, Mage like didn't move to, much, did he? Like, just, like just stand still. Just hit the Frostbolt. Or something. Just like Frostbolt stand but here forever. To give you an idea, like why, whereas me and Lee would be talking um, about the stuff that happened in WoW, you know, be like all the raiding and things like that, um, Boom would be telling us about his story in Dead Mines. Or Wailing Caverns, he'd be like, Hey guys, I did this level 20 dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, really? You know, you're a little bit behind the rest of us. When well, that was, that was the like issue that. at the time. And it, and to be honest, it's still the issue. is the fact that, you know, working a 9 to 5 means that you don't... That's why we're giving you a free level 90! Yep, exactly. That's what Blizzard, Blizzard, I'm like, hmm, how do we get people into this game? Yeah. Because one of the worst things about the game was that people who bought it wanted to play with their friends, and their friends were like, you're level five? <laughs> I'm level How seven. about no? Yeah. But then it was I'm like, raiding with my guild. What to make Go it away, even, come back in two months. What to make it even worse a lot of the time would be like, I'll level a character with you. And then he levels the character when you're at work. And suddenly you're 30 levels behind again. It's mm -hmm. like, well, you know, what's, what's the point, you know? And so getting a high level character immediately actually will make things a lot easier. You know, um... Can't promise I'll be any good at it, but no. <laughs> we'll see. So, for any of you who wish to play World of Warcraft, um, and you're playing EU, uh, just make a character. You've got like six weeks before the expansion comes out, so you can, you know, you yeah. can make a character on Kilrog uh, on the Horde side and level it up, and you can just uh, add me in game, Ribbo, and and if there's enough demand, um, we'll make a little guild, and if there's not. Uh, enough demand. I mean, we have like existing guild as well. Yeah. And uh, you know, I think it'll be a fun little thing. We'll make some uh, videos concerning that because uh, I've always had a soft spot for Blizzard games. I don't think that's ever gonna, yeah. it's ever gonna change really. You know, I mean, I could, I could do something stupid like try a brutal run of StarCraft Two or something like that as well. Like, otherwise known as Korean. I've never got into StarCraft Two. I've never, never. In, I hate RTS games. Hmm. It's probably, uh, it's probably a similar reason why I couldn't get into League of Legends. It kind of feels like an RTS. Yeah, to I me, mean, it's something that I, had, it, which is strange to me because you get so into because you've got so into four X games. Well, I love Team Fortress. Yeah. And, but it, and I love turn-based stuff as well. Yeah, like, well, that, that's what like 4X strategy. is usually, isn't it? 4X is usually turn-based. So that would be your civs, your uh, Age of Empires, your stuff like that. that uh, but I, I see. I can't team, remember what the X is. Team Fortress is the same. You know, because, like, to people who don't play first-person shooters... It looks like a mindless shooter, but to people who play it, it's really quite an extreme strategic-based game. Oh yeah, it's. I mean, like the skill level in it. But the problem amazing. is, like most of the stuff you want to do, you just can't do because you're not good enough. Yeah, exactly. You're like, if I was a better player, I'd do this and kill him, but I can't, so I won't. <laughs> yeah, so I can't, so I'll get killed by this pyro. Or Forget to spy check this guy and get knifed. You know, that's the. Or get frozen, just stand there like... <laughs> That's pretty much all you get to do. Uh, so, um, in fact, I tried to get Lee into Team Fortress 2, and he was having none of it. He was like, oh, he was grumbling, you know. I was like, just just play Medic and heal me. <laughs> just, he was like, I don't, I don't know them, any of the maps. I was like, just stand 10 yards behind me and uh, look behind you occasionally for spies. I'm waiting until, <laughs> I'm waiting until you hit, I am bulletproof! Yeah, I was playing heavy. <laughs> yeah. It's so, just how it's done. That's the problem, though. Yeah. In a few weeks, I won't be able to play heavy. I won't be able to go as a... I won't be able to cosplay as a heavy anymore. As a medium. I'll have to be a medium. <laughs> medium heavy. Yeah. I'll put the accent on anymore. You wanna you wanna get one of those fake beards? Because my well, I've got has one going here. That's well, that's my five o'clock shadow beard. more than anything else. <laughs> uh, pink beard, and I, I wear a a pink uh, wrestling mask, <laughs> and I have uh, pink hair. So it's like pink heavy. Oh, 
Because it's funny. He's funny. He looks like he's, he's a pink Father Christmas, really. Plus, he speak, plus he's got a Russian accent. <laughs> but I think that... Saint you know, Nick, wasn't he? He was yeah, Russian, wasn't he? Yeah. But we are going <laughs> to introduce a few, you know, well, I, I'm going to do a few... Not that uh, we're giving up on heart. Oh, heart no, 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 no. We're not doing that. But I'll, but we're just... videos a month. But, yeah. like, we, the, the, the point was that Boomer sucks at Hearthstone. Well, no, he doesn't, but... Boomer really wants to play Diablo. Yeah. Uh, um, Lee always wants to play Warcraft. And I was like, I basically said, look, we're not doing enough videos together. That's that's the long and the short of it. Yeah. Because I'm always doing Hearthstone stuff. You two were really into Hex, so you, that's gone a little bit off the boil recently, right? It has a little bit. Uh, the reason for that has basically been there's not been a lot of movement with Hex. Uh, yeah. The, the new set... Whenever it, stuff gets boring, you stop playing, right? Yeah. The new set is due to come out. Uh, but they want to do open beta first as well, and they've got PVE in the mix and everything. So there's all these things that are supposed to have been coming out. Mm. But I logged into Hex for the first time in, I think, either three or four weeks the other day just to pick up my VIP packs, and the game did not patch. <laughs> so it's like, that's not a lot of movement going on because I can tell you there are a lot of bugs still in this game, and they know it. Yeah. It's like, you don't have to... Because um, one of the independently run tournaments, the Hex TCG Pro event, uh, they had to ban a card called Relentless Corruption because it didn't work right. Uh, basically, if you, it's a card that says when you cast it, it has an, escal it has an ability called Escalate, uh, which is basically... It has Escalate... In, it like, has Escalate 1... Uh, and every time you cast the spell, it shuffles into your deck and adds a number to it. So it'll basically be, look at the, draw the top one card off your opponent's library, is what this card says. Off your opponent's library? Yeah. And change Bloody, bloody it, priest cards. Yeah. Change its mana costs to blood, so you can cast the card, obviously. Mm -hmm. And shuffle this card back into your deck, and then it the one becomes a two on all copies of that card. And when you cast it for two, it then becomes a three, a four, and a five. The problem, and it works fine until you take, the card's called Relentless Corruption, and it works fine until you take your opponent's Relentless Corruption. Because then you shuffle your opponent's Relentless Corruption into your deck, which have their own escalation costs. And, okay. long, and long story short, if you cast your opponent's Relentless Corruption... I've had it where I drew seven cards off my opponent's deck with his Relentless Corruption. Mm -hmm. The game then gets confused and draws a shed load of cards off your deck as well. Because it thinks it's your, because it's your yeah. opponent's Relentless Corruption. Yeah. yeah. So basically, I cast one and it went, draw seven cards off my opponent's deck, I draw six cards. At which point I was like, that's pretty good for three mana, but I'm not sure that's how this card's supposed to work. And it basically, the, so the cards bugged, so basically they had to ban the card because they were like, this card doesn't work as it's supposed to do, mm -hmm. we've got to ban it. And the problem is, it's a really, really big part of the control versus control meta game because both decks just play four relentless corruptions after sideboard. Yeah. And so that eliminated a lot of problems. And that bug has been around since the game started. Or like since Relentless Corruption has print was printed, that bug has been around, and they still have not fixed it. So that's, so that's that's long and short of it. That's kept you away from the hex. Well, it's the lack of development at the moment. It's like yeah. because it's a one set expand, same as Hearthstone is. You know, because it's a one set expansion, the draft format is pretty heavily solved. You know, the the good players know exactly how to draft it. So there's very little edge to ha to be had in the draft format. So now you're just rolling variants. And but the other problem is, and there's also there's a problem for me, I which I don't understand. It's like there are constructed tournaments going on in Hex. Now, admittedly they cost platinum, which is a little bit of money to play, but mm -hmm. they give they give rewards based on this platinum, and they're actually pretty good rewards. And people have invested in these cards. You know, they've got these 500-hour decks, and these tournaments never fire. 
It's like these constructed tournaments never fire. And I've run the... How many players do they need to fire? Eight. You know, or 16 for the bigger ones. And I've run the numbers for this. You know, I've run the numbers in Excel for it. You need like a 48% win rate to break even. So, like, what are people afraid of to not play... Basically, what's happened is everyone's gone, oh, we're going to play no one but sharks, so no one's jumping in the pool. And it's like, well, what's the point of the game existing then? What's the point of you investing hundreds of dollars in this game if you're never going to play it? I mean, whether open beta changes that, I I don't think it will. A constructed environment is always going to be competitive. The reason it isn't in Hearthstone is that you can literally, you know, there's no well, entry thing Well, the thing about a constructed environment is ultimately it has to have a purpose. Mm. It has to have a point. So with Hearthstone, it was the World Championships. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they were getting 20 million players and whittling them down to 16 or 32 players to to a, attend BlizzCon. Yeah. And 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 like so the idea that you want to spend all this time grinding for such a infinitesimally small chance of qualifying. Yeah. Seems ridiculous. You know, they have to make I mean, hex is something he- feel feasible. And in in hex there's just nothing. Like there's 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 no reason, right? There's well, no reason get- to play the constructed events other than to be able to play more constructed events. Yeah, you I mean you get more packs, you get mm-hmm. thing, but yeah. uh, but at the moment you don't get. Uh, and then you sell them on the auction house for platinum, so you can enter more events. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's like, but they're planning on a world championship. They've got all these grandiose yeah. ideas, but nothing's. But they need happening. to actually get that world championships going. And but the thing is, like, people love rankings. Yeah. People love to be able to compare where they are now. Like, it, it, it's one way of giving people short-term goals. It's like, you know, I'm ranked 127,000th in the world. Maybe I can break the top 100,000 over yeah. the next couple of weeks. You know, like, that that's the kind of thing that motivates people to keep playing. Like, in World of Warcraft, when they had the, the original PvP ranking system, yeah. there was literally the best player on the server. And he would be, like, PvPing... You know, 24 hours a day, there'd be two people playing on the account. And it's like, whoever got the most kills. Yeah. There was also, rank one. Yeah, there was also the. Um, they had like DPS charts and things like that. Cause I remember. For uh, people who raided, there was always DPS charts to be able to compete against each other. But And, and then they introduced the actual uh, proper sort of PvP system when they introduced Arena there. Yeah, because wasn't Lee uh, wasn't Lee like top ten on a server at one point for DPS or something when he was a warrior? That was th- those DPS charts were pro- like provided sort of privately by a, like a, a third party sort of website, yeah. and people would submit them via a, an add-on that they had installed on their computer that would automatically sort of upload them. Yeah. Um, so, you know, people will always find a way to be competitive in a game, but the company themselves have got to create that environment to allow people to be competitive. Yeah. But there's certain things that dissuade people from being competitive and... Uh, entry fees are sort of certainly one of those ways. Yeah, it's uh, it is unfortunate, but we will see how things go. Um, but you know, if it picks up again, yeah. and I'm I, I think in hex the best way is for them to make those tournaments free, not the ones that give prizes, but to have like ranking tournaments. Well, I think they where actually... you earn ranking points and make those free because you still have to go out and buy all the cards and pay money for them. Yeah, I think they actually made a mistake. They tested the servers by having free tournaments with prizes. So obviously they like automatically filled. It's so now like, everyone expects free stuff yeah, from the game. Yeah, basically. And they're like and the thing is these tournaments are like $3 to enter, you know. It's not like it's not like yeah, it's you're not, asking. No. It's not like you're asking the earth from them, you know. It's like and and they give up to we work this out. They give up to like thirty dollars in prizes. But again, one of the problems is that with all of these games that are around currently, uh, even with Magic the Gathering, they're all competing with each other for the same clientele. Yep. 
So, you know, when you have a game like Hearthstone that comes along and does all this and gives it away for free, yep. it's kind of a tough business model to fight against. So I mean, Hearthstone, like, Hearthstone's business model on that, you know, where you, like, pay for Arena but Constructed is, you know, essentially free and you can actually grind gold off Constructed. Um, you know, that's a, uh, that's a very good model because, like, you can play the game. You know, it doesn't matter what sort of level you're at, you can actually play the game. You know, even if you're going to grind, you know, even if you just play like starter decks at rank 25 to 20 for the whole season, it's like you can still do it. Mm -hmm. uh, one, one of the amusing things is, is that uh, someone was claiming that uh, basically they were always losing an arena. Yeah. And they were saying, like, I'm not a bad player because, you know, I, I get to, like, rank 5 <laughs> in Constructed. Mm. Like, you don't even need a 50% win rate to get to rank 5 in Constructed in right. Hearthstone. You just need to play enough games because of the, the, the way you the get win, sort of win streaks. Because of the win streaks. streak, yeah, the win streak. And the fact that, you know, everyone gets to rank 20 anyway. Yeah. Don't, you don't lose points before rank 20. If you play enough games, uh, uh, like a 50% win rate... You will get to rank five. Yep. Um, so, like, getting to rank five is no indication of being a good player in Hearthstone. It's just an indication that you played a lot of Hearthstone. Yeah. Um, like, Legend is the real sign uh, that you can actually do something because you've got to win 25 games. Yeah. More than you lose to go from rank five to Legend. Hmm. Yeah. And a lot of people can't do that. No. I've done it. Yeah. Two seasons running. Yay. Having said that, you did it twice in three days. Haven't you? Well, the first time, it's a lot easier at the end of the month. Yeah. Because all the bad players have reached round five, five, like I said. So you go, and then you reach rank five yourself. And rank four and rank, rank, rank five, rank four, you're still playing against bad players. Yeah, true. And then when you get to like rank three... You can start to hit other people who are already legend at that point. And a fair chunk of those people who've hit legend at that point in the lower legends, they don't care. They've hit legend, so they, they start playing stupid decks. Yeah. Because they just want to test stuff for next season. Yeah. They've suddenly realized they're not going to finish in the top 16 because they're rank 1500 on the server. <laughs> yeah. So they start screwing around. So you get to beat them as well. So, like, during the last three days uh, of a season is significantly easy. So come the next month, you know, I, I did it like... Uh, I started playing on sort of a week after the season started. So it's like 7th and 8th. And by the 13th, I was legend again. I, I wasn't playing as... like as much because I mean I must admit in those three days at the end of the previous season I played a lot of Hearthstone <laughs> yeah uh, but I was also building you know my control paladin deck in that time and doing a lot of tweaking and coming up with the right and I did have to and that was the most fun for me just like trying to get the deck right for the meta game um, so you know Hearthstone's got a lot right in that respect I'm pretty comfortable that for me they're sort of market leaders in 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 getting people to play their game oh absolutely yeah i think they're way out ahead of everyone at this point and uh... i mean they've got like 20 million players in in the same time as wizards of the coast could only dream of getting that many yeah you know, I mean, sure, you know, a lot of those, 8 million of those were playing it just for the mounts. Well, let, let's face it, if there was a PTQ for Hearthstone, how big do you think it would be? Well, it'd be free to enter, so it'd be extremely big, <laughs> yeah. you know, because that's the thing, they they don't charge for their tournaments. Yeah. Because be... there's no prizes other than being able to say, I qualified for the event I was going to qualify for in the tournament. Yeah, exactly. Um, like people actually don't care about prizes if the tournament's free. Yeah, they just enjoy playing competitively. Exactly. So, you know, I I, I think that's the thing that um, they need to do in Hearthstone is actually get the tournament structure in get 
get it in game. Yeah. You know, have like just like a daily tournament, single elimination at like, you know, 4 p.m., 6 p.m., 8 p.m., 10 p.m. each each evening. Have like just four tournaments and a big thing. You know, if you get knocked out of one, come back in two hours' time, sign up for the next one. Yeah, just schedule you know. the events. And there's, and there's no purpose. Maybe Maybe you can earn like points to get you towards world championships that's something know. that's something that hex actually said they were you know want mm, to bring yeah, in as but, well as the but, asynchro- is asynchronous draft but then think, they charged three dollars for the tournament mm, right and that was the difference well you know that was the thing it was like magic online what was one of the most popular things leagues uh, like, and they got rid of them um, and uh, well anytime they realized it with wizard of coast anytime they realized they were giving away too much value that was it they binned it yeah that's why you know, that's went. what that's cost what, them all. that's yeah. why it cost them all the all the players yeah know? but again but the problem there was that wizard of coast never admitted that they had a rival no like the thing is, to play sort of competitively Magic the Gathering now will set you about seven hundred pounds, about a thousand dollars. Yeah, uh, and that's conservatively because you still have to attend the events, and that's like yeah. another fifty. I mean, we're talking standard there, not modern. So you take that thousand dollars, and you say to yourself, "What other things can I do with this thousand dollars, and have comparatively?" A decent amount of fun. So people go, okay, Hearthstone isn't as fun as Magic the Gathering because it's not as complex and I get the wrong things out of the game. So for me, I'm a deck builder, so I can do that better in Magic the Gathering. However, you're not paying a thousand dollars for the privilege, pounds. and therefore, comparatively, I enjoy Hearthstone so much more because it turns out I still have a bank account after finishing playing it. Right? Yeah. And I take this one thousand dollars and you go, this one thousand dollars is going to buy me fifty other games, or it's going to buy me like two hundred other games when they go on the Steam sale and roll yep. five dollars each, or the good old game sale, or what other uh, ever. So you know, what other other sales are done? And Wizards of the Coast can never quite understand this concept that they're competing with everyone else for the same disposable income. Yeah, I mean, the only thing they are competing with is Hex at the moment in a law court. Yeah, Wizard of Coast have always assumed that people who like magic will just play magic no matter how much it it costs them. And for years... they do have a point. You know, they had a point for a long period of time. But then the internet happened. Yeah. (laughs) And their patents expired, but that's another... (laughs) That's wrong for another time. So, you know, this is why we we just want to play all these other games. Because there's all these other cool games out there. And, you know, me, Boomer and Lee said, you know what, let's play some of them. But we might as well make some videos about them while we're doing it at the same time. There's no reason not to make these videos. Yeah, I mean, I think I have something like 188 games on Steam. And I think you're above that. So, you know, it's like... Yeah, I, I still have a $300 credit note on Steam. It used to be $500 just from selling Team Fortress 2 items. Yeah, you got and some... So I had like 500 over $500 that I could spend on games on Steam... And I just couldn't find enough things to buy. Because so you buy in sales, yeah. Because yeah, obviously you wait for a sale. Like, what kind of sucker base for something full price? But again, that's, I paid, that's, I can't that's, remember us, that's us all having been trained not to pay full price for these stuff. Like, I did pay so full you start price doing for stuff one cheap, yeah. no one ever pays full price anymore. Yeah, I paid full think, price for XCOM. That's all I paid but full price. But the thing price. is, yeah, but you got hundreds of hours out of XCOM. Yes, so I did. It was fine. I the last game I paid full price for was Civ Five, which I got two thousand five hundred <laughs> hours out of Civ Five. So yeah, well, but that said, Team Fortress Two is free to pay, and I have four thousand hours in Team Fortress Two. Yeah, I don't know what I've got in it. I've got hundreds of hours in XCOM, so yeah. you know it's worth it. But the point is that. 2,500 hours for Civ 5. And and you split that up, you know, um, and it, it works out like a, a, a cent per hour. 
or whatever, you it's know, for like cheap game and... and the various expansions. You're like, yeah, this this feels acceptable to pay. Like you're paying more for the electricity. You're paying more for the <laughs> for yeah. the devaluation on your computer than you than are, you for, are the for the actual game. Yeah. So, like, sometimes, yeah, you're fine paying full price for a game. Like World of Warcraft, it's fine. It's like it's a tenner a month. Ten dollars or ten pounds a month, you know, whatever country you're in, uh, to subscribe to it, and then you go, well, that's like two pints at the pub. That's like half of the cost of going to watch a film at the cinema. Oh, you're being, I think and, you're being like, optimistic for, there. And it's for the entire month. Yeah. You know, yeah. You, every time you go onto the forums, there's still some eleven-year-old kid. Um, complaining about the cost of the subscription, which is rightly so, because you know it's a lot of money to an eleven-year-old. But yeah. you know, to anyone who's got a job, it's just the the cheapest thing in the world. Yep, for the for the sheer entertainment cost. So we talked about Diablo. Um, I'm not quite sure yet whether i'll be joining you on that i mean i mean i do own diablo 3 yeah i don't own the expansion i'm like mm, 30 pounds i'm not sure i'll play it enough but um definitely like world of warcraft is fine yeah it's i mean the thing nope. is you can watch it, it, it seems a lot of fun because i mean I, i've done no research into the expansion i hate i hate playing on beaters because yeah. like, uh, the most unfun thing about any game is the grind. Yeah. But it's fine the first time you do it because it's all the storyline. Oh, this is cool. Look, well, you know, look how all these characters are developing. But if you've already done it through on the beta, you're like, uh, yeah, I know what's going to happen. Now it's just a grind. Yeah. I mean, that's why I actually like what they've done in Diablo with like the whole seasonal ladder and the fact that you, you know, your character. There's, there's multiple characters you can go this season I'll play this, oh, is it? this the, the I'll... hardcore ladder in Diablo do yes there's a hardcore ladder now and is that seasonal yep there's, there's seasonal and non-seasonal because uh, basically what I think what happens is once the season ends your seasonal character becomes non-seasonal at that point and then you create a, and then you go for a new one but uh, hardcore hardcore deaths are always the most amusing thing to watch on Twitch anyway because people's reaction especially if it's down to lag it's like the game lags and they get killed from off screen it's just like the rage that happens when you see a hardcore death but you know, it's it's a new facet to the game because obviously, if you're playing softcore, um, well, it, it makes for, for good viewing, like yeah, you said. Yeah, if you're playing softcore, you just go for like as much damage as you can throw out. You know, because if you die, there's no consequence. You just repair but your how, stuff. How do they do the softcore ladder though? What's that all about? Uh, greater rifts is one of the measuring sticks. Uh, basically, you so have... you just score points for, and it's whoever has the most points. Well, you have what are called nephilim rifts, which are where you basically do the most of your farming. But what the nephilim rift um, bosses can drop to what are called greater rift keys, and the greater rift keys level up. Like you get, you know, the more of them you you do a trial initially that gets you into what level you're going to be. And every time you beat a Greater Rift, you have a choice of levelling up the Greater Rift, so going into a harder one, or upgrading one of several legendary gems that are in the game, which socket into rings and amulets. Uh, and I think level 25 Greater Rift is about equal to Torment 6, which is like the highest normal difficulty level. There are people who have done Greater Rift 40, and like that, the, the, I don't think there's an official. Yeah, there is an official lad because it's basically like your highest greater rift level and how fast you beaten it. Ah, oh, right, okay, so I've done it on time. That's yeah, basically every every greater rift has a time limit for you to beat it in, otherwise it won't let you level it up. You'll still get the drops, but you mm -hmm. can't level up at that point. That's as far as you go. Um, Are they pre-designed levels or random? Random, same as Nephilim Rift. So. Sometimes you making the time limit just depends on how far away the damn end boss is, right? Well, no, because it fills up based on how much you kill. So it's like there's a bar that just fills up based on how much you kill, and like elite bosses count for more and things like that. Okay. So you kill as much stuff, then the Rift Guardian appears. In a greater rift, 
Um, the so once rift... the, the meter is full, yeah, the, the rift monsters. guardian appears. Uh-huh. Uh, the rift guardian appears um, in a greater rift. When it appears, it kills everything or everything else in the level. Um, but the difference between Nephilim farming and Greater Rift farming is that in Nephilim farming, everything drops off everything. You know, you can pick up anything off that. Greater Rift, nothing drops except off the boss. But on, but like legendaries drop big time off those boss. It's like some people have reported getting like three or four legendaries off the same boss. Mm -hmm. you know? So, you know, and apparent, I think the higher you go up, the more likely they are to drop. Yeah. Now, what what people have done is because greater rifts have very uh, high drop rates. What they actually did was level as slow as they possibly could. So it's like instead of what some people were doing, which is like get a level like eight gem, rush through it, get to a level fifteen gem, rush again, get like a level twenty gem, and just keep going and going until they can't go further. What some people did was flunk the trial. Like, just don't touch anything. Get a level 1 gem. You then wait for ages until there's less than 4 minutes left in a rift and then kill everything and you get a level 2 gem there. And they just, like... That's how a lot of them farmed a level, the greater rifts. Um, so that was sort of gaming the system. But personally, I just run through So them. why why did that work, though? Because you get to... Because what happens is you use one keystone and it's that keystone that gets upgraded. Mm -hmm. Once you get as far as you can, that keystone is destroyed. So what they're doing is getting as many greater rifts as they can for one Out keystone. Out of that keystone. Yeah, so okay. it's as many legendary drops as they can get off one keystone, basically. Um, so what uh -huh. they do is they like they kill they get up to like ninety seven percent on the scale, and then they go off and do bounties or something like that for like ten minutes, and then they town portal back in. Then they portal back into the rift, and it gets the, uh, and it. Um, has Does the meter go left. down? No, the meter never goes no. down. It's all but it's all based on how much you kill. So, so like Nef normal Nephilim rifts don't have a time limit. You just have to kill shit. The greater rifts are on time limits. So, yeah. and you can get special other drops. Like there's a My Little Pony level in uh, in Diablo Three mm -hmm. now. Whimsy shit, you know things like that. it. Feel it feels dead guilty. It feels dead guilty throwing lightning bolts at ponies, but you know. <laughs> Just like murdering all these ponies and like happy clouds and things like that in the level. I don't know what the Diablo writers were on when they thought of that, but you know, it's like... well, it's probably because you know Blizzard owns Hearthstone and Hasbro own Magic the Gathering and they also own My Little Pony, so it seems yeah. like <laughs> yeah, the two rival companies like yeah. poking fun at each other there. Yeah, I mean, the other thing that they did, I mean, just to bring Valve into it as well, one of the things that comes up on, uh, you know, one of the help hints that comes up on Diablo 3 is the cow level is a lie. So obviously they've robbed something from Portal there while they, you know, going on Diablo. Because obviously in Diablo 2, it was like there is no cow level when there was, but in Diablo 3, there isn't one. There's just a, uh, what do you call it? There's a pony level instead. Now, um... You've also been, like I said, you know, I mean, we, we talked about this briefly. You've also been a, a sucker for sort of Saints Row and stuff like that. Um, I know Saints Row 4 has started hitting discount, but that's the thing. It's not hit, like, enough of a discount. It's been, like, 50% off. Yeah. You know, like, when it came out, it was, like, £40, $60 brand new. Yeah. And, like... There's so many games that come out on Steam and you're just waiting for them to sort of hit about $5 yeah. before you go, yeah, this is actually worth it. Because you know you're not going to play it for more than like 15 hours. Yeah, I got like Saints Row 3, the full, like, plus all the DLC for something like six quid uh, at one point, mm -hmm. you know, in one of the sales. So, But, you know, I didn't buy that for ages either. I don't know if I've got Saints Row 4. I might do. Oh, I can't remember. No, I, I uh, but on your own channel, like... You've just got a bunch of like fifteen-year-old games. <laughs> true, 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 true. Although Sins of a Solar Empire is fa well, no, it's not that new actually. <laughs> but it's only the mod that I'm playing. It uses DX9, so yeah. Uh, I mean, what, we onto like DX13 or something now. No, it's Dark eleven. Protects. It's eleven now, I think. Yeah, um, but it's like six years old, isn't it? Direct something, text, something right? like that. Yeah. Um. But you, you, you had like a lot of the old Star Trek games that you used to play through. I mean, the yeah. thing is, you got some bizarre number of views for, given that there were some of these obscure games. Yeah, it was like 30, 
3,000 views or something on like one or two of them. Um, I honestly don't know what caused that. I know I got mm. linked from a couple of articles, but I don't know why my... I mean, a couple of other people do uh, LP, so I don't know why mine got linked above other people's, but it was uh, mainly because I knew exactly what I was doing in the game, where a couple of people were, like, fumbling around and going, what the hell? Or doing the ca- or doing the cardinal sin of talking over intros or talking over... That's one well, thing I can't stand. It's like you're doing an adventure You game. have to. Believe it or not... Um, if you actually read the sort of like the, the the agreements with YouTube and stuff like that, talking over intros is something you actually have to do to avoid getting copyright strikes. Yeah. Because if you don't talk over them, then you're just recording game footage. Or which you have is not to. Allowed. Or you have to include the intro as part of a video where you talk, basically. But the what the well, one you, thing you, that... you have to you have to talk over like musical intros and stuff like that, and it sucks. You know, yeah. for people who like listening to Commander Riker or whatever. Yeah. But if you don't do that, then uh, you you can never monetize your videos. Yeah. Well, the the one that was for me was the fact that I didn't want. Uh, but what they do is, it's okay talking over the intro. I understand that. Um, but what I can't stand is when they talk over the characters when they're talking. It's like I oh, want to hear what. what? The- it's like that character is actually saying something important to the plot and you're saying something completely unimportant at this point in time. Um, Unless I mean, it's Neelix, you can talk over him. You can Neelix. talk over him all you want. and I actually That was the one thing I regretted about my Elite Force walkthrough. I never used the um, console command to give myself a photon torpedo launcher and just shove it in his face. <laughs> that was the, I'll have to do that. Oh, no, he's not in Elite Force 2, is he? Damn it. <laughs> it was like, I was just thinking that I definitely did that when I played the game, like for the first time round. When I saw, because he's a dick in the game as well, like he usually is. So I was just like, every time I got, I just went console command, give myself a weapon, kill him. But um, no, it's uh, it, that's what kind of gets me because a lot of the games I do play on that channel have a lot of dialogue. It's like, just talk when there's no dialogue going on. You know, the dialogue is, especially to games that were made in the early 90s, it's like dialogue is everything in those games because there was no such thing as graphics. You know, it's like, played. I played one of my old favourites, Simon the Sorcerer 2, a while back. You can see the pixels that make his face up, you know, and you could back then as well. All 12 of them. All 12 of them, yeah. You know, all 16 colours that were used at the time as well, you know. So... Yeah, the dialogue was so you know you're not when you're recording a game like Hearthstone. Obviously, you talk a lot because there's no dialogue whatsoever. But you know, it's like if you're recording and the music's ge- crap after the fiftieth iteration of it. Yeah, it's like if you're recording a game where dialogue is an important part of the game. Shut up and let the dialogue run. You know, it's like what you have to say can wait. You know, it's like you have full, especially if you're doing it after the fact. It's like you have full control of the editing process. So, like, I mean, it was fascinating. Some of the stuff we used to do. like one one of the old favorites is that like we we, we used to occasionally sort of play wrestling games. Yeah. And just make every character be controlled by the computer and then just watch them. <laughs> that was funny, yeah, the SmackDown but, videos. But yeah. that was only funny because you used to make characters who looked like you. Yeah, true. <laughs> that, that was so the first thing you like, did. So it'd be like Ribbo and Lee and Boomer beating each other up, <laughs> like computer control. Yeah, because like, the, the only thing that the only thing you ever Didn't did... did you give I, me nunchucks or something? <laughs> something like you, that. You made me like... Uh, a, karate dude didn't you i was like i, I gave you judo like, not karate i gave you like neo stuff from the matrix you gave me all those... the throws yeah, yeah you did give me all the throws i remember that yeah um what other characters do you oh you had like strong bad out of home star yeah we it? made we made strong bad <laughs> yeah um with boxing gloves for hands. yeah he did have boxing gloves <laughs> for hands as well we made we made the incredible hulk i'm pretty sure um, well that that's an original one i'm sure no one else has done, that, done one. that one yeah it's like we, we made a few characters for sure we Dunk also took the character in green paint it's done yeah and of you know but you know it's 
the first thing you do on any any fighting game, any wrestling game, whatever, when you have the ability to customize a character, the first thing you do is make yourself. No, <laughs> yeah. no, no. The first thing you do is make your mate. Yeah, you make your mate. And then make him as sucky as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Like, here's here's the th- character who will get eternally beaten up by everyone else. I think I gave you like speed ten or something in that game as well. You could like leap to the, you know, you could leap to the top rope and things like that. It was ridiculous. It's like now well, got- I, I, I was the uh, the the uh, the equivalent of the uh, weaker of the Dudley boys. Yeah, it's like now we'd be what you got. Now we'd all be slow. It's like we wouldn't be fast now. We'd all be slow. Yeah, you have these delusions when you're a student. You think that you, you know, you think that you're a lot fitter than you actually are. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, but that's... you know, in it's something that pops up in World of Warcraft as well. That it, it, occasionally people like to customize their characters in certain ways. You know, yeah. it, it's possible with sort of the the drops that you get in the game now because you can transmute items to look like other items so you can build like themed characters yeah they intru- they actually introduced that in Diablo 3 as well transmogging items. but it, 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 it's something that happens in other MMOs like like for example people when they used to play city of heroes and city of villains just used to spend all of their time in the create a character yeah, and not actually, actually playing the game. Play, uh, you know, they, they just used to make tunes, as they were called, yeah. in that game. So it's, they just tried to basically copy existing superheroes as much as possible and see how close they can get. And that was actually a reason they actually had, one of the reasons why they actually shut down City of Heroes, because uh, actual game companies were making copyright claims against them because they had, were allowing... Yeah. They had like five pretty much copies of Wolverine. Yeah, all the other other Marvel heroes they shouldn't have been uh, putting in there. But that's pretty much where we're going to be uh, going. That's what we're going to be doing over the next few uh, weeks and months. We're going to be uh, certainly months. I mean, I, yeah. I I've bought like a three month subscription to WoW, and I'm pretty certain I'll renew it. Yeah. I mean, we're going to be... I'm, I'm going to renew it as well because it costs more in November, so I'll yeah. be renewing mine quickly. And the reason why I'm doing these videos with other people is my computer can't <laughs> record them. <laughs> yeah. So, and the, and you the know, good... I need either you or Lee to actually sort of record the footage while we play together. Yeah. The other good side of that is that we'll be getting fibre soon up near where I am. Um, BT, British Telecom, wouldn't do it. So, basically, because I live in probably the most... You know, I think Cheshire, aside from London, is probably the richest county Cheshire in the UK. Cheshire has the most millionaires yes. outside of London. So, literally, a lot of Cheshire business interests conglomerated together, got to BT, and went, here's 28... They're all footballers, though. Yeah. They all play for Man United, <laughs> and they all live close to us, don't they? Yeah, they live, yeah. like oddly edge is where most of them live. Um, but Fell wall and yeah. places like that. Just... But it was like, they got together... Uh, Nutsford. Yeah. A few, a few um, business Cristiano interests Ronaldo. Got, to, yeah, got together and just went, here's £28.1 million. Will you install fibre over all of Cheshire? And BT went, yes, we will. <laughs> and so by uh, March 2015, apparently uh, the entire Cheshire will be covered with fibre, apart from about 3% of it. And for once, I'm not in that 3%. And uh, Americans can't understand this, because you know, like some places, in, uh, a, lot, a lot of Americans pay like like $135 a month. For fibre. For their internet. No, for, yeah, for their internet connection. You know, yeah, I mean, you know, people like Comcast, and we, and, and, and we refuse to pay more than $15 a month for anything like that. Yeah. I mean, you know, I pay a bit more, but that's because of where I live. Because you live in the middle of nowhere, yeah. yeah. I actually live in a black hole. You know? <laughs> I, I, I get mine free with the, the subscription to Sky. Yeah, I mean, I, I could do... I'm not sure... It, if once we get fibre, Sky might cover this area, and if they do, then obviously I'll switch to Sky because they're. Because we like our sport, don't we? We like our sport, and it's like and the uh, what do you call it? You know the uh, yeah, latency like, and the speed yeah. on Sky is really good. Pay like so thirty-five pounds a month for Sport Channel, right? Yeah, and and they, they, they ring me up and they say, uh, "Can we interest you in our films channel?" Like no, and I went, <laughs> no, and they went. It'll be one pound extra 
a month for like seven film channels and we got like 500 films yeah i was like so that how much does that work out per film and they were like you know 0.2 of a penny i was like it's too expensive no thanks <laughs> I, was like, I was just just not going to watch these films it doesn't matter it could be a penny and i will still never watch that ch- i mean film. that's that's the thing the I'll cheapest watch- the yeah. cheapest thing on sky by a long way is the movie yeah. channels and it's, like- and it's like why won't i watch the movie channel because it's not sport yeah <laughs> you know, it's like sport will always win in the UK. That's just how it is. Yep. In fact, Sky probably makes more money out of Sky Bet than it does out of the movies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, if they want to get people watching movies, you have to be able to bet on the movies <laughs> yeah. on what's going to happen next. <laughs> yeah, that's basically the UK. If you can gamble on it, people will be interested in it. That <laughs> is the UK. In fact, um,. Gordon Brown, when he was in office, asked a head civil servant, apparently, uh, what would it take to be able to tax gambling in this country? And the civil service servant with a straight face said, you to be voted out of office. Because that's exactly what would happen if you tried. You would be out of Downing Street within six weeks. I mean, we both have a history of, like, you know, I mean, I've been playing poker 15 years, you to, like, a lesser degree, like, what are we looking at, seven years now? Something like that. And... You know, they banned poker in America over the internet and because of the power of lobbyists and, and, and the way the system works in America, it would have zero impact on on whether you got in or out of power because there's like a fair chunk of sort of... If anything, it'd help you because... It's a Christian... fair chunk of middle class Americans who are all Christians who yeah, like the conserv- hate the concept of other people having free will or and fun. therefore... <laughs> or or fun. Fun, yeah. Therefore banning gambling is a good thing. Um it doesn't ha- it doesn't help that like the, the the areas of the america where gambling is legal are places known locally as sin city yeah so or that were built by the know. mafia you know <laughs> so um that's a good thing for a f- to to get in power is to ban gambling in america but it's the absolute opposite in the uk yeah yeah absolute they, opposite if they anyone tried to get in power and ban gambling it'd be like and see you in 20 years because that's the next time you know maybe by then people will have forgotten that you did that <laughs> yeah it'd be like you know what was it? it was prohibition in the states wasn't it where mm, they banned yeah, alcohol yeah. yeah it's like no over here there are to, you know like our god over here is gam our gods over here are football beer and gambling they are the gods of uk society so it's like you want to put a tax or a, you know ban any of those, you'll have a riot on your hands, pretty much. It'll be worse than the Scottish. Uh, it'll be worse than the Scottish elections. Anyway, guys, I think we we kind of summed up this video. So you know, World of Warcraft uh, EU server kill rock horde side um, add ribbo. Um, you can add Lee as well. His username is Boric, um, B O R I K. Uh, if I'm not online at the time. And um, we'll see how much demand there is for that. Uh, hopefully enough. Uh, I mean, because the thing is, you know, if you if you do decide you want to play with us, then you'll probably end up on a few videos at some point. Probably get shouted out by me, but... <laughs> I think Lee's more likely to do the shouting. I'll, I'll be no, more like... Lee, Lee. Lee doesn't do shouting. You know, Lee lets other people get angry. Yeah, I'll, I'll be. Like, more... Lee gets very angry privately. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, gone are those days of him because because he's like me. Like it's just a game now. You know, I'll I'll, I'll be like. So I'm supposed to stand here, right? <laughs> no, no, I'm I'm looking forward to shouting at you. Okay, I mean, that enough. is probably what most appeals. <laughs> It'll be what the, you into the game. Be what the videos will be. It just be and Ribbo shouting for ten for an hour. <laughs> but the thing is, like you can be completely terrible at the game currently and still be fine. The way the raids are set up because they're really easy. Like everyone just blasts through all the content unless you're doing the heroic stuff, yeah, which the heroic you never switch, will. Yeah. You, you'll never get. You'll never be able to do the hero raids because you won't be able to get your gear good enough in time for that. But you can you can blast through all of the sort of the other raids um, 
in the random pickup dungeons and stuff like that and everyone else will just do it for you it doesn't matter if you're completely terrible cool but you get to see all the content do all the storyline and i know that's important okay yeah cool anyway this wraps up this video so you know please uh leave a comment um below if that kind of interests you and and maybe i don't know Maybe if there's enough of you in America or whatever, you can you can have your own little server somewhere, and you can let us know how that goes. And uh, you know, if you do upload your uh, make your own videos, we can certainly put them on the channel if a few of you want to get together and do stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that that kind of sums it up for us both. Um, there's nothing else Lee's playing as a Springsbine. Diablo three with me, but that's yeah. about it. Yeah, and you you're gonna be doing a few of those videos. Yeah, I think. Again, you know, if people want them, you know, just let us know if, if you want to see people playing like that. Uh, and let us know if you actually uh, think everything um, Boomers just said is completely wrong about Diablo 3. <laughs> like, if you know better. I'm sure someone does. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we shall see you next time. See you soon, guys. <laughs>